Amazing. Hi, I'm Aurora. Today I want to talk about should Christians date non-Christians? Plus, I also will comment on some of the reasons that Christians give to validate and show that they can date non-Christians. I shine, I shine with God, so I praise my beast and dine with Jesus all my days. Amazing grace, how sweet the... Should Christians date non-Christians? Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me, if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, if we have a Christian here, and we have a non-Christian here, and they start a relationship and get married, this person being a non-Christian is going to have a major impact on this Christian. Because this Christian is heading towards Jesus. But the non-Christian is heading in the direction of hell. And the fires of hell. So if you've got two people going in different directions, something's going to happen. Okay? Either this person's going to be able to grab this person to go that way or this person's going to get pulled down this way. Now the Bible verse that I just read said that why not just eat and drink today because we're going to die tomorrow and that is the position of someone who's not a Christian. They haven't accepted Jesus so they don't think they're going to go to heaven they don't think they're going to live forever and so their life has no purpose no true meaning they might assign meanings that are actually false and actually harm harm them but they don't have a sense of what god wants for this person or for the, themselves now are there any valid reasons for dating a non-believer there is a verse that's mentions about Christians being married to non-believers and staying in that marriage. So doesn't that mean that you could still date someone? Well, the ultimate answer is you can do whatever you want, but is that beneficial and is that going to give you the life that God actually wants for you? Those verses show that really it is against what God wants us to do as Christians. And in the past, years ago, I actually dated some non-Christians. And every single one of those was really bad in a variety of different ways. Sometimes the men themselves were quite nice, sometimes they weren't. But even the ones that were quite nice there was still this happening. I was heading this way, this person was heading that way. If I'm wanting to get closer to God, I've got to pull. You know, I've got to pull away. And so because of that, pulling, wanting to pull towards God, there's friction here. And if someone stays like that, then they're, they're basically not going towards God. And that's what I found, that if ever I wanted to you know, get this person to church or, or to do something, you know, that they might consider spiritual, praying or talking about God, then there was a whole lot of friction and I ended up just staying put. Instead of moving towards God, I was like stagnant and it was really confining. 
something that's really good about God is that he teaches you new things every day, new blessings, new revelation of how good he is. And to have that new revelation and then to not be able to share that with that person is really detrimental to this whole relationship. And it's like being stuck, you know, stuck in a cage and you know that this is the way, this is the way to go, but it's just so hard to do anything because this person will resist it. Every single Christian that I have talked to in depth about this, if they have been in this situation, they have never fully been able to reach what they wanted to do for God. And there's been blessings where they've been able to show this person or even relatives their goodness in Christ, but they haven't reached out and done what they wanted to. You know, if they wanted to do some type of service for God, then there's been a lot of restriction in that. And if this Christian has gone for everything that God wants in their life, then this Christian or this non-Christian or both of them have called it quits on their relationship. So if they were dating, they stopped dating or if they had gone to the stage that they had gotten married, then they've gotten a divorce. And then once this person was separate, then they were able to fully realize everything that God had for them in their life. And that has been the case for everyone that I know that I've talked to. This is a very strong reason for not dating a non-Christian in the first place. Yes, we love them and yes, they are people that we want to love and we want to bring them into the body of Christ but we pray for them and we still have to maintain our closeness to God and our heading towards God and to do that we need to be separate, separated by God for God. Now what about the Christians that say oh but I am going to witness to my date, my non-Christian friend. I'm going to witness to them again and again, day after day. I'm going to show them the love of God. I'm going to bless them. And they're just going to have to come to the side of God. They're going to have to declare Jesus as, as Lord because I'm just going to bless them so much. And I have heard of a few instances of this happening. But I think there's a better way there is a better way and it will also help for any of those times when it wasn't going to happen anyway that they were never ever going to become a Christian. If this Christian wants to witness to their date then they should not be dating in the first place. They should keep this person as a friend, just a friend and pray as much and bless them as much as they can from that position because then this Christian will be maintaining a strength in Christ that they won't have by joining with this person, okay? Because even in dating, there can be a lot of the non-Christian pulling them down and taking them away from God. So much better is the way to do it where you stay in your position of strength in Christ. Stay firm in Christ and if this person was going to end up coming to Christ through your witnessing, well, let them do that from your position of power, okay? And then from there you can move forward together, okay? But you just keep in your in Christ and keep stepping towards Christ and keep in that, um, that road of power that God has you on. This is why Christians or believers in Christ should not date non-Christians or non-believers. We should stay in our position of power in the body of Christ separated from the world. Yes, we love the non-Christians. Yes, we bless the non-Christians. Yes, we pray for them. And we do that from our position of power in Christ and our position of safety in Christ. I hope you've enjoyed this and if you are a Christian then please 
seek God in this because I know that he wants you to stay in him and that position of safety. And if you're a non-Christian, know that I love you and God loves you just as much as Christians because Jesus died for the sinners to bring them to Christ, to bring them to himself, to have them as his body. And we have such safety and blessings and we know where we are headed. We are headed to heaven and some awesome celebration time, which is fast approaching. <laughs> Okay, and I don't want you to go to hell, and I want you saved, and so please believe in Jesus, he's your Lord, he's your saviour, and God bless you everyone. See you on the next video. Don't I shine?